Uh, I grew up on Long Island, uh, played lacrosse at Swanica High School, which was pretty famous for a 91 game winning streak. Uh, I was very fortunate, I was part of 58 of those wins. And uh, my high school coach was a remarkable guy. Uh, Bill Rich, who grew up in Syracuse, went to school at Syracuse, started teaching at my high school, and uh, developed some great teams. Also played football in high school, and uh, my dream was to continue that uh, in college. And I found out that the two managers were bigger than I was. So uh, that sort of died out a little bit. But my opportunity to go to Maryland was tremendous. Uh, but I had a military commitment. I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, I had a commitment, so I couldn't take that job for about six months. And during that period of time, I started teaching uh, as a substitute teacher. And liked teaching so much that I took a teaching job. And it's probably the best decision I ever made because uh, it gave me an opportunity to get into coaching. Uh, I coached football, basketball, and lacrosse in high school. And it gave me an opportunity to go from a high school job to Cornell University. Uh, very few people in those days had that kind of jump. Usually they would hire from college to college. But I went right from high school coaching uh, to an opportunity at Cornell. I did this playing squash, and other sports are great for it. In the off season, we had 35 players on our total squad. Of the 35 players, we started and let them get involved in a mural basketball. Now, we had guys come up to me and say, Coach, I've never dribbled a basketball. I said, you're going to start now. And I couldn't care if they couldn't dribble or chew gum at the same time. All right? I wanted them to get out of court, get to know their teammates. So we would put teams in the intramural league, seven or eight guys per team. Their job was to press all out so they can work on their footwork and defense. And their ability to pass, peripheral vision, technique, touch, upper body movement, lower body movement. Uh, so you had three undefeated teams um, and three national championships. But what, what would you say uh, those teams had in common that these you know, characteristics that these guys could try to aspire to be? They would go through a brick wall for one another. Never had a coach in one. They, they really went 110 miles an hour. They worked hard, pushed hard. Um, if we did sprints after practice, they would do some extra ones. They used to say it was for America, Marine Corps, and for me. Okay, so they would do extra ones. Um, shooting, they put a lot of time into shooting. During my period of time, the goalies would make 24 to 25 saves in a game. It'd be 48 shots in a game, or 36 shots in a game. Some would go in a goal, some would go past the goal, but they made numerous stops. Today, if a goalie makes 10 saves, it's like the greatest thing since white bread. <laughs> okay? So the shooting accuracy is not what it should be. So become better shooters. Work on it. Work on it. Accuracy, very, very important. Velocity, okay, but be accurate. We watched games last year in the playoffs, and some of the key parts of that game got screwed up because of the inability for the shooter to be accurate. Challenge the goaltender. Okay, you should be challenged every time you take a shot. So all these things are part of our routine. And someone will say, well, do you have time for anything else? Sure you do. You budget your time. Budget your time and do the things that are necessary to do. Players that play for me, lacrosse is about number eight on the list. There are many things above lacrosse. But once you step across that line, playing lacrosse, that goes number one. Make something happen. When you step across that line on the field, make something happen. Just don't go through the motions. You know, in all honesty, and this is not a lie, we really didn't have any problems. Number one, we never stressed the winning streak. Every time we stepped on the field, we went on, out on that field as an underdog. If I felt players were getting cocky, they don't go on the field. 
if I felt dirty. We didn't announce the starting lineup until the day of the game. So when we came back from the team meal, the starting lineup would be on the board. That meant the players had to make that team every day. Okay? And sometimes some players got some surprises. But that was great because that's competition. So their commitment and their feelings for one another really carried tremendously. What you say is like the one thing that separates the good teams from the great teams? Togetherness. Every day. Locker room, feel, school. Togetherness is strong as can be. If you're together, it's going to be very tough for somebody to beat you. Okay? You show me a player that doesn't make a mistake, and I'll show you a player that's not trying. Think about that. Show me a player that doesn't make a mistake, and I'll show you a player that's not trying. My belief is make the next play. Okay, when a player would come out, I never wanted a player to come out with his head down. Okay? I want encouragement from the bench, encouragement from the coaches. Sometimes coaches have a tendency, and I saw this the other night, that they really get up in a guy's face. Okay? I don't know what that's going to prove. Okay? The player is alert. He's awake. He realizes he made a mistake. Go on and make the next play. But if you're constantly worried about your mistakes, you're not going to master this game. I always loved when my team was down by two or three goals. We were down in Maryland in the 76 championship game, 9-2 to two at halftime. Game was at Brown. Chris Berman was actually a PA announcer. He was a student at Brown at the time. We went in at halftime, down 9-2. The locker rooms at Brown were like catacombs. They were built in the 1920s, okay? Hottest Hades outside, hotter inside. So we went in. And I was a believer in those days, little Coca-Cola, sugar back in your system. Now they have other things. So we drank Coke, popped outside, took the board outside, drew a couple plays, went out, and beat them in double overtime. So if we had gone to that locker room screeching about how bad we played, we probably never would have won. So the players got to stay calm. Believe in yourself. Positive. Anything you can read about positive attitude, positive outlook, read it. And that will help you establish that vibrations that come with being positive. You got a check coming to you. <laughs> Fellas, this, this has really been great. Seriously. Right now, I want you to take your arm and put it around your teammate. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful because we're going to do the same thing tonight at dinner at 7 30. Okay? And we're going to remember our teammates that are no longer with us. So, what you're doing here, carry it on. Slogan after practice. Come up with a slogan. I was just at the freshman, have to come up with a slogan. Like, I love Stony Brook. I love lacrosse. Okay? Something like that just to carry on. And if you're practicing in the stadium, you're going to hear the echo. And the echo really reflects on what your team is. It's a team of spirit, heart, determination, and drive. 